Hello artists and welcome back to art class. What we're going to be learning about for our next project is um, we're going to be doing a project based on an artist named Yayoi Kasama. She is a Japanese artist. She's actually still alive. Most of the artists that we learn about in art um, you know, lived a really long time ago and are no longer with us, but she is actually still alive. I believe she is 91 years old and she lives in Japan. And even at the age of 91, she is still making artwork, which is fantastic. This is a picture of her in front of one of her pieces of artwork. Uh, her signature look is this funky red, orange, orangey red wig that she wears. Um, she actually started painting when she was a very young girl. I have included a link for a video called The Dotty World of Yayoi Kasama that you can watch after you finish watching this video just to give you a little more information and a background about the artist. Um, one of her favorite things that she enjoys painting and creating are pumpkins. She does paintings, she does sculptures. As you can see, she's in front of one of her pumpkin sculptures here, and she absolutely loves all things polka dots. Something to know about Yayo Kasama is that as a young child, she started experiencing hallucinations, which means she kind of started seeing strange shapes and objects in front of her when she was just kind of looking around her as a child. And a lot of this included sh uh, interesting um, abstract shapes and polka dots. And that kind of comes through in a lot of her artwork with a lot of the dots that she has. And then pumpkins happen to be something that she loves very much, so she has made that the basis of a lot of her projects. Now, since it is fall, and since we're learning about an artist that likes pumpkins, and pumpkins in fall go hand in hand. We are going to be making your own Yayo Kasama inspired pumpkins. Also making sure that we're showing the element of art, which is value. Remember, value is when you are showing lightness and darkness in a piece of artwork to make it look more realistic. If we were to take these pumpkins and just color them one solid color, they would look very flat, just like the piece of paper that they're on. But if you add value, it makes them look a little bit more three-dimensional and makes them pop out a little bit more. Uh, for example, this is one that I made. You will have the option to cut it out if you wish, or you could just keep it on the paper. And I too have added dots like her. You can show, we are going to be showing value two different ways in this project, both in the way that you color your pumpkins and in the way that you create the dots. You can see that the dots that she has put on her pumpkins are much wider and larger in the middle, just like the ones I did on mine, and they get smaller and smaller as they approach the line that splits them into the different sections. So even though it's a flat piece of paper, it still looks kind of like a three-dimensional pumpkin because of the value shown in the way that I painted this, I painted this, and also with the way that I show the dots. This is a pumpkin that I painted that I have not added the dots onto yet, but you can already see that I used yellow and then a little bit of orange to show value, to show dark and light in the different spaces, and then I will also add with a Sharpie, the dots on top to complete the project. I wanted to show you a few more of her pieces. So this is a giant pumpkin sculpture which she made. She also created um, different installations, which are pieces of artwork that you can actually step into an experience rather than just looking at a painting on a wall. This is an installation that includes hundreds of these pumpkins, and it looks like there's even more because this entire room is covered in mirrors, which makes all the pumpkins reflect and makes it look like there are about, you know, even more pumpkins than there actually are physically in the room. This is a print that she did with different pumpkins. She does use different colors. She does use a lot of orange and a lot of yellow, but this is one that also shows green, red. You are going to have the option to do whatever color you would like to do with your pumpkins. And then this is one of her giant pumpkins that serves for a great reference when it comes to working on yours. So let's move on over to my easel and I am going to show you how to draw two different pumpkins. You can make a tall vertical one or a smaller horizontal one. I'm gonna break down how to draw those. And then I will talk to you about the different options you have for coloring your pumpkins and then adding the dots. So 
let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's break down how to draw your pumpkins. You have a choice. Again, I'll show you my examples. You can either do a taller vertical pumpkin where you hold your paper vertically, or you can do a shorter, wider, horizontal pumpkin. So that is completely up to you. Drawing them is very similar, but I'm going to draw them out. You're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil, and then you are going to probably want to outline it with a marker. I'm going to draw it with a marker just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. The major key to drawing these pumpkins is using all of your space. You don't want to draw a tiny little pumpkin in the middle of your paper because then you've wasted all of this space. You really want to make these pumpkins as big as the paper. The only thing to keep in mind is to leave yourself a little bit of space on the top of the paper for the stem. So I'm going to start with my really tall pumpkin. I'm going to make sure I leave a little room for a stem and I am going to make a really big line that comes around up and stops here, leaving a gap in the middle for the stem. Now my stem, I'm going to draw two lines that come up because if we had a pumpkin where we drew the stem literally coming out of the top, that's very cartoonish. If you're actually looking at a picture of a pumpkin, it does appear that the stem goes into the pumpkin and this will help it look a little bit more realistic. Then at the bottom, I'll draw some lines for like where the roots of the stem would attach. And then I'm going to make an oval at the top. This is where the stem got chopped off. Now I have to add the different spaces. You don't want to make too many. You don't want to make them too skinny. Um, this pumpkin has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. This is probably the max that I would do. Um, the horizontal one also has seven spaces, but you can see with the horizontal one, they're a little bit more spread out. So you could even do less with this, but I would start by going down the middle. And then when you add the ones on the side, you don't want to do straight lines because then your pumpkin is just going to look flat. You want to curve it with the shape of the pumpkin. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. This is pretty good. So that's separating your pumpkin into spaces. Let's do the same thing with a horizontal pumpkin. Okay, so you can tell I took up my entire space. I added my stem. You could even put a little curve in the stem if you'd like. And now I'm going to split it into sections. And there is my horizontal pumpkin split into different sections. And now I'm ready to move on to the coloring part to add some value with color first and then adding value with the polka dots. So I've decided that I am going to make my pumpkin a magenta, kind of a pink color. And I was digging through my color pencils and I actually found um, a lighter magenta that's a little bit uh, like dustier and then a brighter magenta. So I'm actually gonna do a combination of both of these. So if you find like, if you wanna do a blue pumpkin and you find a dark blue and a light blue, you can use both of those to make value. Now let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna take my lighter magenta and I'm gonna do this for every single one of these spaces. I'm gonna start with this one in the middle here. And I am going to take my time and color in my pumpkin. Now, I'm not making it all one solid color. I am going to be adding value, but you can start off light and color in the entirety of the space. So I've kind of colored it in very lightly with this colored pencil. Um, I'm gonna jump to the other magenta. And what I'm going to start doing is I'm gonna start adding a little bit darker along the edges by pressing a little bit harder on my pencil. Now the harder you press, the darker the color. The lighter you press, the lighter the color. So I'm gonna go back and forth between pressing a little bit harder on my pencil and pressing a little bit lighter on my, on my pencil to create value that is darker on the edges and stays light in the middle. In fact, I'm probably not even going to touch the middle. I'm only going to be coloring with this on the edges and blending it in as I go. And that takes going a lot of back and forth and just practicing. Um, another thing to keep in mind, if you notice the way that I colored this, 
is because this is a vertical shape, and it's going to be the same with the horizontal one too. Because this shape is tall, the way that you want to move your pencil is up and down. You don't want to be going from side to side because it's going to be a lot harder to do that without going into the other spaces. So you want to move with the shape, in which case this would be tall and vertical. So you can see on the edges, it's definitely a bit darker. I'm gonna pull this down so you can see. So you can see on the edges, this is where I pressed harder with this brighter magenta color pencil. I left the middle alone nice and light, just how I first colored it, and it gives it a sense of value going from dark to light and then back to dark again. And I'm going to repeat this process for every single one of these spaces, and then we'll move on to adding the dots. You can also color in your stem. You can make your stem the same color as your overall pumpkin. You can make it black, you can make it gray, you can make it a completely different color. It is totally up to you. So I'm gonna go finish coloring this, and then I'll be back to show you how you can add the polka dots. All right, so the last step with your pumpkins is to add more value with the dots. You can see that I've already colored my entire pumpkin. Now listen, this is going to take some time. This is not something that I want you to rush through. I want you to take your time and make it look nice. That is how you get a better grade. Do not rush. I will be able to tell if you did. Take your time. Make sure you get your blending right. And then you can move on to the dots. Now for the dots, you can do this using, it depends on what you have at home. You can use a regular Crayola marker, a black marker. It has to be black. Uh, the only thing that I am going to say about the Crayola markers, if, if you look at my example here, you can see that these two rows of dots are a little lighter than the other dots. The darker ones are Sharpie. The lighter ones are Crayola markers. So I just want to warn you that they will come out a little bit lighter, but that's okay. If that's all you have at home, that's all you have at home. I would recommend a Sharpie if you have that. Um, so either you did your coloring by a color pencil or if you have watercolor paint and you want to try doing it with watercolor paint, you can do that as well. Uh, this one I painted the pumpkin yellow first, let it dry a little bit, and then put some orange on the edges and kind of tried to blend it with paint. So you could either do it with paint or with color pencil. Now for the dots, the key to showing value with the dots is having the larger ones in the middle and then adding the smaller ones towards the edges. So it doesn't really matter what space you start in because all of the spaces are going to be done the same. So I will work on one of them. I will go back to the same one I did the last time. So I'm going to start off with larger dots that I'm going to color in as I go. And then I'm going to start adding smaller dots going out. And a row of one more if you have room. And there's one of my spaces filled in. And I'm going to repeat this process again for every single one of these spaces until my entire pumpkin is filled in. Um, you can also see that I colored my stem black. If you want to add some polka dots to the stem, you can do that too. But it's completely up to you. And here is my completed Kusama pumpkin. Um, you can see I put all of the large circles in the middle, and they just get smaller and smaller toward the outside of each shape. I also decided, since my other examples, I left the stems clean, that I would see what it looked like if I put dots on my stem, and I actually kind of like it. It's a very interesting look. Uh, once you're done, you can either just keep it on the paper like this, or if you want to, you can take a pair of scissors and carefully cut out your pumpkin just to, you know, give you a different shape to look at. Just make sure you keep your name on the back. All right, so that is your assignment for this week. Once you are done, remember to take a picture of your artwork and attach it to the assignment on Teams so that I can see it, uh, leave any comments for you, and add a grade to my gradebook. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can always rewind the video, look at the examples, and don't forget to take a second to watch the um, the video about Yayo Kasama to learn a little bit more about her life and what makes her such an interesting artist to learn about. Hope you guys have fun, and I will see you next time for our next project. Bye!